mushroom fans, it's Anna McHugh spending some time outside at the end of uh, 2021. It's been a little while since I published, but uh, I'm outside really enjoying myself. And I have found a very unusual specimen of Calvatia cyanthiformis. This is a common edible puffball mushroom. I'll describe how to identify it. And if you're uh, you know, interested in foraging for wild mushrooms, it's a really good choice because it's super common and you can find it in cooler weather, which sometimes in North Carolina is a little challenging. But the thing about this particular specimen that just blows my mind is that what you would see on the interior of an average puffball would just basically be a uh, you know solid white tissue, kind of like tofu. And as this particular species, uh, Cyanthiformis or Calvatia Cyanthiformis, matures, that turns into uh, a you know at first yellowish material, or you know it starts to discolor, and then ultimately turns uh, sort of purple brown, a much darker version of this sort of scaly exterior, which is very very common and a really crucial feature for identifying this species. But the thing that's really interesting about this specific specimen is instead of just having, you know, this uh, solid white to gradiating yellow uh, maturing stuff, you have what's called gatation. So it's basically these little uh, adorable and very, very bright yellow droplets of, uh, of, you know, goo. Well, it's not goo. It's very, very watery. Now you'll see this uh, gatation on um, a number of different species. It's very common. Oftentimes they're much more hard and woody. In the uh, you know um, North Carolina Piedmont where I live, we have a very very common uh, you know really woody thing that grows at the base of oak trees called Pseudo Inanatus dryadeus, and it's just this big knotty lumpy thing, and it has yellow gatation, which can or uh, amber gatation actually more frequently, which is really really pretty, and so it's this mushroom that looks like it's it's weeping essentially, but I've never popped the mushroom open and seen uh, gatation on the inside. The thing that's fascinating to me about this, besides the fact that I've just never seen this feature before, is it is the same color that these spores will become. So I have no idea what's going on with this little hollow in here. I do wonder if these are like maybe spore infused, but I don't know enough about gatation or mushroom metabolites to really tell you much. Besides, I'm, you know, delighted to find it. Another mushroom with gatation that is really beautiful and probably one of the more iconic weird mushrooms you'll see, you know, circulating on social media is uh, Hiddenellum pecii. It is this little white blob. It's adorable. It's got these poor, you know, this porous surface and then, uh, you know, bright red gatation um, all over it. So, you know, you will often see, and again, with Dryadeus, it's yellowish, but more toward uh, an amber color, but that's really beautiful. But Hiddenellum pecii, like really pops because it has that, uh, you know, gatation. And it's also kind of fun to say gatation. I sort of, um, like vacillate between, uh, gatation and, uh, exudate depending on my mood. Exudate also feels pretty fun. So, uh, either way it is a feature that, uh, you know, a number of different mushrooms and mycelium will, uh, demonstrate. And interestingly enough, this, um, you know, actually looks a great deal like a metabolite that is, um, exuded by, uh, oyster mushroom mycelium and other, you know, species of mycelium when you're growing them. I'm not suggesting that this is the same thing, but when you grow oyster mushrooms, you'll often, oftentimes see these little pockets of yellowish metabolite, sort of like just watery substance around the surface of say a fruiting block. If you're growing, you know, mushrooms on a block. And that is actually, uh, you know, a protective mechanism of, uh, the oyster mushroom mycelium. So it basically is, uh, you know, antibacterial. It deals with um, actually one of the most remarkable things I've ever seen as far as uh, how robust oyster mushrooms are is I was growing them and uh, they got infected with a very common uh, green mold, aspergillus mold. And I, over the course of a couple of weeks, like totally ignored it because I just wanted to put it out of my mind and I felt terrible that my oyster mushrooms were dying. And I came back a couple of weeks later and opened this uh, container and I found that this, um, you know, mass of green mold had been reduced in size to just a couple of like, you know, the size of maybe a thumbtack on this, uh, you know, this uh, mycelium block. And it was surrounded by this uh, yellow, uh, you know, metabolite exudate that was very clearly like the 
immune response of the mycelium. Now, in the case of this, hidden alum pecii, pseudoidonatus, dryadeus, I don't know what function that getation serves. So um, that's just a mention of, you know, watery, colorful substances on mushrooms and mycelium that I find to be interesting. Let's return to this specific mushroom. Besides the fact that it is, uh, you know, got this cool feature to it, it is actually a pretty easy mushroom to identify. I did uh, call this uh, Calvatia cyanthiformis. There is a, um, you know, possibility is Calvatia fragilis, which is just essentially the same, but smaller. Um, and I'll explain why in a moment, but either way, it is an edible mushroom. I popped this one open, but when it was, uh, you know, in its original shape, and this is probably, you know, when you would want to harvest one for eating, it's just kind of a little blob, oftentimes up to the size of a softball. Uh, you find them growing in grass, so they are a decomposer. They don't, you know, rely on a tree or plant partner to, um, you know, survive. So you'll find them, you know, in pastures. I found this one, uh, you know, just walking around in a yard. Um, and, you know, so it's kind of got a, a whitish uh, sort of tan, almost fawn color typically. And what you'll see is uh, this sort of um, development of a little bit of sort of scurfiness or scaliness. Basically, it's, uh, you know, sort of brown and a little bit on the purpley side. And you can see it, it's not like super duper purple. Uh, but, you know, if you're inspecting it pretty closely, it's like a brown purple color. As these mushrooms mature, sometimes they're much darker in color, much more brown purple uh, as well. Another feature that you'll see, and this is why I'm not sure if it's, uh, you know, Cyanthiformis or Fragilis specifically, is that this mushroom, uh, you know, usually has a, uh, like a, basically a neck um, at the base of it. And it oftentimes isn't really big. Like we have one that is called uh, Calvatia craniformis, and it's shaped like a brain. And so it's all convoluted and brain looking, but it also has this big ass brain stem. Whereas, uh, you know, Cyanthiformis, uh, you know, Calvatia Cyanthiformis uh, has, you know, a neck typically not quite as large and then fragilis looks almost identical to cyanthiformis without a neck confusing enough they're all edible that's the nice thing about them and a nice thing about puffballs in general so um once you open the fruiting body up if it is in good condition it is this sort of whitish color um it looks a little bit almost like um you know uh, a uh, marshmallow perhaps it does take on a bit of a yellowing color you can still consume it up until like it starts to turn um sort sort of more the color of the gotation yellow like that's about actually the end of when i would consider this to be edible Reason being that, you know, as these mature, they uh, essentially, the center turns into spore deposit that turns brown purple. And so when you find these, when they're super mature, they're still fun because you can pick them up and throw them at people and spores go everywhere. And it's, it's delightful and very colorful as well. But, um, you know, in that in-between period when they're not quite snowy white and they're starting to turn yellow, you start to get a flavor out of them that is a little bit on the funky side. And it's not necessarily unpleasant, but as it turns yellower, it gets sharper. So it's almost like mildly cheesy and that can be nice until it becomes more than mildly cheesy and into the territory of like this is a mushroom that i am no longer interested in consuming so uh Cal in conclusion calvatia cyanthiformis definitely a fun one to find i am super pumped about uh you know this gotation i've just never seen anything like it i don't know what purpose it serves it's almost as though like the mushroom in the middle maybe had some sort of you know, um, I don't know, some sort of reason that it didn't develop in the center. So you have a hollow, but the hollow has a coloration and, and some, uh, you know, exudate that is the color that the spores would become. One final remark actually for identification that is really helpful with this mushroom and with uh, other Calvatia mushrooms is you have um, a, uh, basically a uh, like little sort of skin that is on the outside. It's really easy to, uh, you know, see uh, and separate. In this particular mushroom's case, I, uh, you know, oftentimes you'll see a sort of it's, it's more dark brown um, and whiter on the inside and a little bit of like purpley stuff starts to develop. Let me see. Here we go. This one's got a little bit more of a distinct, uh, you know, um, separation in color. So that's kind of nice. It's also, you know, the, the surface of it, um, again, it's, it's uh, a little bit more robust on the outside than on the inside, but the whole darn thing is edible and it's ten, you know tends to be reasonably pleasant again not a ton of flavor um i prefer them when they are just completely white on the inside some people you know i 
do like them when they start to take on just a little bit of yellow. Um, and, and, and again, it's, it's just sort of a preference thing. I kind of use them a lot like tofu. Uh, and oftentimes we'll throw them in with a bunch of other mushrooms because they take up other wild mushroom flavors. And so I get a lot more sort of bang for my buck. Uh, but long and short, this is a really cool one. I'm very excited to find it. I hope you have a pleasant 2022. I also hope to see more of you. I've been on a break from making videos for about a month. And although that was relatively fun, I'm also glad to be babbling at my camera again. I hope you are well wherever you are, and I hope you find a billion mushrooms.